Okay. Um, well, when we were first discussing the restoration of the large Fergina shelter, um, one of the things uh, we did was to come here to Moore's uh, maquette studio. Uh, this is where um, he worked for um, most of his life from 1970 until uh, his death in 1986. And so the very first um, inspiration for that helmet piece you know, comes from this little maquette in plaster. Um, and this was made in 1975. But the idea for the helmets actually goes way back, um, back much further to 1939 uh, before the war, or just as the war was breaking out. And uh, Moore was very much uh, involved in the whole, um, the idea of protection and sheltering and enclosure. Um, and he was very much involved in the uh, interests of uh, the Spanish Civil War, which is why one of the casts for Figure in a Shelter is in Guernica. Thinking about the color, uh, it's really interesting to look at the plaster working model and although uh, this is plaster it's uh, much warmer in color because he colored it with walnut resins um, to give it a really organic uh, feel like the found objects that influenced him so heavily. You know, as you can see in his studio it's absolutely crammed full of all kinds of found objects bones, seashells, stones, driftwood, everything. And what's interesting in the uh, model is that, uh, first of all, it's a very closed form, much more like a helmet, and it is in fact called Helmet Head Number 6, because it's from this big series that, that he worked on largely in the 50s and picked up again in the 70s. Um, and as he enlarged it, he separated the forms out because every time you're um, working with uh, enlarging, the proportions change. You need to um, think about how the enlargement is affecting the spatial relationship of the figure and the shelter. Uh, so in the original maquette, you've got this very tight closed form, and as he enlarged it, he separated the forms out and brought the figure, which is the interior form, forward. And one of the things that's interesting about all of this is actually that he experimented a lot. So in the, uh, in the original small plaster maquette, he's got a green wash applied. So he's obviously thinking about it possibly being green one day. Um, but when he enlarged it a little bit more, he made it brown and warm and organic. And in the bronze maquettes, such as um, these, you've got uh, a very warm golden brown patina, uh, much more like the finished one we're working on with large figure in a shelter. Uh, and he's also tried different things. He's tried different interior forms. Uh, for example, you've got this very skeletal shape uh, and this one which is much more abstract looking at the, uh, the holes and the centers of the figure. Uh, and in this, this is a variation. It's actually uh, the maquette for helmet head number seven, which uh, was never enlarged. So this is uh, the largest of that version. And here you've got the very smooth shape, much more in keeping with the enlargement for the large figure in a shelter. Um, whereas in the maquette for helmet head number six, it's got a lot more texture, as does the working model. One of the things we had in mind uh, about the color for the uh, patina for the large figure in the shelter um, was the maquette over there on the shelf in his studio which has this very yellowy golden brown patina um, and also uh, the original bronze maquette which has a similar but slightly darker brown and the working model plaster. Um, so what we've chosen is something that combines all of those and the reason behind that is really um, that when the forms are enlarged to the extent that they were for the large figure in the shelter, they become much more architectural. And, um, and the hard edges, the clean lines, the fact that you could walk right inside and have it completely around you, it really does become you're the figure in a shelter. And, um, and really, a brown gold patina can take that architectural hard edge much more strongly than a green patina can. So Henry Moore made his maquette, then the working model size, then the six foot version. Upon creating the six foot version, he was given a commission to create the large 25 foot version that, uh, that you'll see us restoring. 
This was um, enlarged in polystyrene, which is a very lightweight material. Um, this allowed Moore to experiment with various configurations, uh, pushing the walls about and moving the figure. Um, with a final result, the figure was pulled right to the front um, to allow more space around the sculpture. The polystyrene itself then went on to Basingstoke to the Morris Singer foundry to be cast in bronze. Because of the scale of it, the piece was made in several sections and reassembled on site here at Perry Green. Some 25 years later, we are now embarking on the restoration of this piece. So here we have um, Henry Moore's uh, large figure in a shelter, which unfortunately um, Moore never saw finished. He, he saw the, um, the enlargement process, um, but he never saw the whole work finished. It was in the foundry at the time of casting, but he died and uh, there was no end result created. He hadn't decided on the finish of the, sur uh, the surface, the patina that was needed. Um, so when the work was set here and also in Guernica in Spain, um, his then director of the foundation, which was Bernard Meadows, his first assistant, decided on the, um, the finish or lack of, as it were. What happened was that um, he decided upon a, a polished bronze surface, which we have up here, but the surface was then lacquered to protect that surface, which is great, it's a protective surface. But in doing that, it protects in two ways. It protects the elements from the outside, but also the inside. Because the bronze is hollow, um, it creates condensation. Um, with the weather that we have, it rains, um, moisture gets in underneath, and through the summers, um, the bronze condenses, creates water inside, and that tends to leach out. In leaching out, uh, with the lacquer there, it can't escape because obviously there's a, there's a barrier. So what we have, we have oxidization being created underneath the lacquer. Um, this will either be held underneath the lacquer here, but in turn, it will gradually blow off the surface. It will pop off the surface, which we have here. It starts to pit and then it blows off the surface, blows off the lacquer, leaving the raw bronze, um, which is one of the main problems we have here. Um, we also have the fact that um, with this area here it was totally exposed to the elements. So the weather is coming down onto this, the rain, the sun, the wind, and it is attacking the lacquer from this side. So it's, it's wearing down the lacquer um, from the outside in. So we have the fact that the lacquer is being broken down from the inside and we also have the lacquer breaking down from the outside. This creates what we have here of a patchwork surface of lacquered area, unlacquered area. The bronze um, is no longer in the state that it was prepared. So the uh, whole process we are going through now is machining down the surface to bring back the, the original surface to create a patina on top of that. If we look here, there's an area where we've already machined so you can see the um, the lacquered area here, the lacquer with the oxidization below it, and then the machine down raw bronze. So these are three elements that we have at the moment. From the raw bronze, once the whole surface is machined, we will then apply patina. Um, at the moment, we're probably going to put on a light gold through to mid-brown patina. Um, which will then show the highlights in the sculpture and the low lights. We can work the surface um, to give it a little more life. Then um, what we will do, we will apply a wax coating on and a wax, wax polish. This will protect the patina and the bronze, but because it's more organic, it will naturally break down and allow the patina to develop both from underneath and once the wax evaporates, it will allow it to um, work with the elements a little more. We will no longer have this kind of um, leaching out underneath or this problem that's caused by having the water trapped behind a barrier.